What's up? This is Jesse Warden. So we're going to talk about the package JSON. And the reason is any software we create is going to have some form of libraries, a way to build it, and some kind of instructions to test and see if it's working. So the package JSON is many things, but for Node and JavaScript browser development, it is the main way to determine those three things. So we're going to walk you through what those three are, describe why they're important. And if you think of it like a recipe book from all these recipes fit in a small little book, they can basically create meals. That is the blueprint of how you cook food. The package JSON is the blueprint of how that particular piece of software is configured. So we'll get to so source control after this, probably tomorrow. I'm doing videos every day now. So today we're talking about package JSON, get you set up to install the libraries you need, configure your software. And then from there, we can use that to build many different pieces of software on the web. So I'll take you through a tour of some of the projects and show how, regardless of who built it, in what way they configured it, what compiler they use, what libraries they use, what version of JavaScript, maybe they're using TypeScript, that that single package JSON can allow us to build all those things without even knowing how they're configured. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Now the whole point of package JSON is to install packages or libraries or build systems or whatever else, basically big chunks of code. Now the majority of those are on GitHub. So if you open a browser and go to github.com, this is a website that hosts both free and paid for software. If you have private software, you can actually host it in source control here. But for most of the stuff, it's open source. And people will host their projects in various repositories, basically a specific URL for stuff that they have. And you can download the code, right? And it's for free. And if something breaks, you want to file issues to it, you can do that. So NPM will install these libraries from all over the internet, mainly from GitHub, into your local machine. It does this through something called NPM or Node Package Manager. So if you installed Node, you get Node Package Manager by default. You have an NPM, you'll get a bunch of commands that you can possibly run with it. We only care about a couple. So I've showed you NPM in it in the past. Let's make a new directory here. We'll CD to our documents. I'll go MKDIR, which stands for Make Directory in Unix speak. So we'll say, call it a, package and then we'll cd in a package or change directory and i hit command k to clear the screen so i can see what the heck i'm doing so we'll do npm and init dash y and what this will do is automatically generate a package json for us in a nice little format you can see it prints it out to the screen here if you want to customize it you just type in npm init now you can install things without package json but if you're creating a project you probably want to have this package JSON here so you know what libraries you have and other people who check it out see what libraries you used. And if you delete the folder later, you can check it out from source control and get the libraries you need. So we're going to check this out. We're going to type in ls. It says list all the files. We have nothing in here. So let's create some code and I'll show you how this works. So I've opened up our directory and you can see the package here. It's got a name of what the project's called, what version it is. These are completely up to you as is description. It's very common to have a main or index is the, the main and first script. And scripts are things that you can run. Words are for authors who create software. So when you search on the internet for the NPM registry, which is a website that lists all these packages or GitHub or other places, this kind of helps feed the search engines or abuse it. Author is you and or your friends and or the other contributors. And good old license. I suggest you default to MIT if you don't know what the heck that is. So this is a basic package. But notice there's nothing in it. So let's create some code called index.js. So let's use good old log equals console.log. So let's make a function called, it's a string, brah. You pass in something. Don't know what it is, but it's something. And we'll let you know if it's a string or not. Now you'll notice I'm using lodash. Lodash. Lodash is a library which does really two things. A. And it gives you a bunch of nice little functions that work across browser, low level things such as numbers and string parsing and all kinds of stuff. And it'll work in Node, it'll work in the browser, it'll work in Firefox, it'll work in old Safari. Lodash is really cool. And it also is a gateway to learning functional programming. We'll import it up here. Since we're doing it Node style, we'll do it like this. Say so require Lodash. And when we run it, we say node index, it'll go boomity boom because it doesn't know what this is. So if we look in package, there's nothing in here. So if we say, hey, npm install, npm install is smart enough to say, all right, the current directory I'm in, which is pwd, what's the current directory, 
it's going to look in this folder, and npm install is going to go, okay, package.json, tell me what to install. Package.json says, nothing. So if you run npm install, nothing happens, right? And you'll see these warnings. It's basically looking at your package.json and trying to keep it up in a tip-top shape. That's great. Warnings, you don't really care about. Errors are the bad ones. So that's fine. Let's add a description. Basic stuff, brah. And no repository field. That's letting it know where it's actually stored in the source control. So now we've got the description that's happy. But notice there's no Lodash, so it's still not going to work. So let's install it. So instead of going to the internet, going to lodash.kizom, and getting rid of the docs here, which I go to a lot, as you can tell, and going here and clicking download, this is what we did in the old days, is we'd copy code to our local directory and some programming languages still do this like flash still did this uh, lua does it a little bit there's kind of a package manager for it sort of it's growing which is kind of cool but not all languages have package managers python and elixir for example have have them ruby has them with gems python has it with pip if you don't have it you just download code and throw it in your library but in our case we're not going to do that what we're going to do is npm install lodash now what this will do is it'll create a node modules folder and if you run it, it'll save it locally. And Lodash is installed. And if we look here, known modules, you can see that Lodash is installed. That's really cool. And it has all the source code. And most of this is in the GitHub repository for Lodash, if you actually go to GitHub. One thing that's not in here is things that they don't want you to have. So for example, they can create a list that only is what they want you to install when you install, which is kind of nice. Not everyone does that. So your node modules, you install more and more libraries, tends to get gigantic. So let's just see how the source code for Lodash, we're not using the minified build, right? The shrunky, like uglified and all the white space removed. Let's go see how big this guy is. So we'll go to package and right click on it and go to get info. You can also do Apple I. And already it's five megabytes for one library that has predicates and cross browser <laughs> compatibility. So good news, Lodash.com, kill the docs. The core build, four kilo, yeah, so it's four kilobytes gzip. So the raw stuff that you need that allows you to play with it, debug with it, all the source maps, it's already five megs for one library. Now, most JavaScript projects range from two libraries to hundreds. This gets pretty big, <laughs> and you don't want to check that in the source control. Let's see if this works first. Let's just test it out. Node, index, index. Cool, so it works. Now let's test it with a string. We'll say, is a string, brah? Yo. And we'll log out the result of this. And we'll put some nice little debugging information in front of it. Is a string bra true? That means yo is a string. So let's do the same thing, copy pasta coding with a one, which is a number. And it prints false. So our code works, but no one can share this. No one can download it and do it because they'd have to know to npm install Lodash as well. Now with one file, they can look at it and know, but when you have many files, all over the project, maybe with many developers, it's too hard to know what's used and what's not used. So let's install it. So we'll rerun our npm install, but we'll do a special command called dash dash save. This will save it in our dependencies. It's a list of libraries that I need, but I chose not to check in because they're gigantor. So you might not understand why you'd need to check in things that are gigantor. It's considered bad practice to check in large binaries or large amounts of code, especially libraries when things like this exist. So instead you check in this package JSON, which is about a kilobyte, and it says, hey, I need Lodash, and here's the version I need, or you know anything higher that doesn't break it. And that's it, you just check in this thing and we can nuke our node module. So I'll do rimraf, which is rm-rf, means delete this folder and all folders within it. So it's gone. Now when we run npm install, It'll look in the package JSON, recognize that it needs Lodash, and install it for us. Fantastic. So now when we run our code, after we run npm install, we can immediately run node index, and guess what our code does? It works out of the box. So fantastic. That is the main part of package JSON is to install your libraries. Now, if you're running things that you don't want installed, such as Mocha, so if you want to write some unit tests, we can install them in a similar manner but we can do a special, I'm gonna do chai for searching libraries. We can do a special second command called save dev. 
Save dev just means save it in our development. So we like this code, but we don't want it in a browser. Or if we're building a node application, we don't want this in the server. We just want it in our local machine to play with. So for unit testing stuff, you don't want to put that in the browser, right? And you don't want to put it in your live API. So we're going to save dev. And if you watch, it installs a ton of friends, <laughs> but it, it puts it in the dev dependency. So these are used for us to develop. That's what they call dev dependencies. And Chai and Mocha, not so bad. Now, if we look at our node modules now, let's take a gander here. It's seven megs. So we're already at three libraries deep and it's 7.5 megs. And these are the ones I don't even need the browser. So things are getting pretty hefty. But the cool thing is, this is it, this is all you need. So you can delete this folder, check in these two teensy little text files. Anybody else can check out their projects and use it. So we'll do it again, we'll rimraff our modules. Notice it doesn't exist anymore. And we'll make a basic unit test here just to show you how it works. Index.test. And we'll import chai. I forgot some imports, but I'm gonna start coding anyway. So we'll do a describe, which says, describe my thing that I'm testing. It should work. And even better, we'll just make a basic unit test. We'll just say, true should be true. So we'll say, true should be true. Now don't worry about unit tests. Don't worry about the syntax. We're just trying to show you that we can use multiple libraries in a JavaScript project and ensure others can use it. So we'll say, for now, expect true to be true. And I believe it is like this. Let's try this. I think it's this expect is actually on Chai. Now, a couple problems. Now, on my machine, Mocha is not installed globally. So if I type in Mocha, it's just not going to find it. So what we have to do is we have to actually dot slash into the node modules folder. So let's reinstall it for us. We'll get M Mocha and Chai in there. And we will watch this. We'll actually go inside the node modules, find the Mocha binary, which is in here somewhere, and then run it. So we'll say Mocha index test. And cool, it'll run our basic unit test. Now notice this is lame sauce. Now you have two choices to fix this. A, you can install your module globally, or you can utilize, once again, package JSON. Package JSON to run it. So let's change this default test to actually do something cool. We'll say mocha index test. Now notice I typed in mocha instead of the whole dot node modules insanity. When you run tests or shell scripts in here, it knows to look in your node modules locally for you, which is a very cool trick. So now I can do something called npm test. npm says node package manager run the test script in the what? That's right, current directory. So we'll say npm test. And she'll do the exact same thing. She knows to find Mocha in our node modules. Pretty rad, right? We'll nuke everything again. We cannot run our base code. Doesn't work. Can't find Lodash. And we try to run npm test, and that doesn't work because it can't find Mocha. Do our npm install yet again. It'll install both our code dependencies and our unit test dependencies, or dev local dependencies. Now when we run node, it works, and we can run npm test, and our unit tests work as well. Package JSON not only lists your dependencies of code you need for libraries, so you don't have to check in seven megs, it also gets your dev dependencies as well, and you can write neat little scripts that know about your node module. So pretty cool trick. Node npm has a bunch of scripts that are working by default. Majority of scripts have to go npm run and then whatever whatever you call it. Right, so if you write scripts, but there's a few special names that you can utilize. The one that we care about the most is usually for server projects called start. We're just going to call it this for default. I'll say node index.js. So instead of typing npm run, we can actually type in npm start and it'll default and run our basic script, which is pretty cool. It runs it in there, works locally, finds all the libraries, good to go. So I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to add an existing local one that we already have, which is our package JSON example. And what we're going to do is create a remote repository as well. So the code I have locally that I've already written, I want to create a remote one. So I'm going to create it and I'll explain this source control stuff later. Basic package JSON example 
for the world. Actually, we spelled that right. Yeah. World. It's not private. Hit create. And it's not going to show up. Just kidding. So we'll go to package. We got our three things. You'll notice it's smart enough not to check in our node module. So we'll say package JSON index and index.js. Yes. Initial commit. Push changes to master. Now, anybody in the world can go to github.com slash dresserxl, go to the repositories, and see this package. This package repository, anybody can check out. So let's go check it out. Now, a clone from the URL. So every GitHub has a clone or download. You need to get a zip if you don't feel like dealing with source control. Or you can get this nice little URL, SSH or HTTPS, either one. Most clients support both nowadays. Paste that in there, and we'll choose a directory on the desktop, Mugu. And we'll check to that folder on my desktop. So we'll go in here to the desktop. This will go. I always forget these commands. I'm awful at Unix. Desktop, cd, Mugu. And we see our code in there. So now when we try to do npm start, which is the de default for most projects, because package JSON allows you to define something, doesn't work, can't find any of the code, or low dash. npm run test doesn't work, so you can't find that either. So let's do npm install. Now let's try npm start. Oh, that works. And npm test. And we see our unit test. So as you can see, package JSON is nice. Gets you these teensy weedy weedy files, meaning this package JSON, which is 364 bytes. These tend to get pretty long. These scripts get long, and that's okay because then it's a text file. It describes your entire project and helps out. Now, is this a flawless system? Absolutely not. You see this nice little carrot right here? This is bad. <laughs> what this means is, is that if somebody else installs it later, they may get different code in their node modules than you. So the whole it works on my machine, unfortunately, <laughs> can still happen. So here's what you do. The quick way to solve that is to do npm shrink, learn how to spell, man, shrink wrap. And this will get exact dependencies of all the libraries that you're currently utilizing. If we go in code and take a gander at what it did, let's open our desktop project because I moved it. We'll go to Mugu. And you'll notice there's this new one called shrink wrap and it gets exact versions for Lodash and everything else. It doesn't really care about dev dependencies, but it does care about dependencies. So anybody who installs this code will be able to run unit testing, <laughs> not so much. There's another command for that, I forget. Make sure you check in that shrink wrap JSON, which I will do for you. So hopefully that gives you an understanding. So as you can see that package JSON, that single text file, you check that in and that's all you check in. That teensy little piece of text, people don't get mad, you, you check in binaries and it describes all the libraries you need. It describes how to test your software and it basically configures everything for you and maybe even builds it and deploys it, right? The, the scripts, as you've seen, can do a lot of amazing things all based on top of Node. So hopefully that gives you an idea. And again, if you got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I post these every day now, so don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for your time. Hope this helps.